Hi guys, today we'll talk about algebraic data types. So what is data type? Uh, when we define some value, let's suppose val some flag, and we set it value to be true. So this is a value or named flag and its type of boolean and boolean has possibly two value true and false so data type means that we have some data and it has a particle type what is meant by algebraic data type so this algebraic data type is abbreviated as adts and this a is sometime we can find as an abstract and sometime we will find this term as an algebraic from abstract this is about object oriented term which is used for abstraction let's suppose when we talk about sequence it's an abstract type of all collections it has no connection with algebraic data types so what is meant by algebraic so when we say some data type build is algebraic it means that this data type is uh, going to obey some well-defined mathematical properties some math properties so we call them that these are algebraic data types what we get the benefit from adts algebraic data types we get the confidence if they are following some well-defined mathematical properties it raises the confidence that this is bug free now let's understand what is algebra actually in math so algebra is meant to be by three aspects it is about talking about three aspects the one is it is a set of objects set of objects elements inhabitant so we can say that when we talk when we say int so for int one two three and so on they are inhabitant this is inhabitant of the set int they all belongs to actually int second algebra says about set of operations so set of operations it means that there are certain operations when they those operations were being applied on those uh, those set of objects they will result let's suppose 2 plus 3 will result 5 we apply that operation plus on two operands 2 and 3 which belongs to int and they generate another element which again belong to int the same set and uh, the third one algebra says about set of laws set of laws those laws that which define a relationship uh, the laws with relationship between those operations and those set of objects those inhabitants so there are certain laws which uh, which it uh, which we define and they satisfy so let's suppose we talk about like identity identity mean uh, multiplicative identity and addition identity so from multiplicative identity means one and uh, from addition identity is zero means when we say two multiply by three multiply one so it is same as six so this result will same so it will it's an identity and for addition it means that two plus o it is again two and there are certain other rules like there are commutative there is associativity uh, so these are set certain set of rules which define the relationship between uh, 
operations and uh, objects. Now let's talk about uh, what what uh, as a multiplicative identity and uh, mul additive identity we have in Scala. So in Scala we we can get a type one which should be unit and unit is has a very special value so for a unit we have a special value which is like double like a parenthesis like an empty set so if we talk about a tuple which is uh, let me go down so if we talk about some tuple so tuple has let's suppose uh, int and string so this tuple contains these two elements but when we talk about uh, some empty set like unit so its specific value shows an empty set which is only and only one so it's a spe uh, special symbol for that and uh, for when we talk about type zero let's suppose so it is nothing now this is very interesting that when some type is nothing so we there is no inhabitant there is no inhabitant for nothing because if we say x is uh, belongs to nothing so it means there is something so when we are saying nothing so it means there is nothing so there can't be any inhabitant for for that type so when we say zero so nothing so there is there is actually nothing well that's a little tricky but yeah so this is uh, they satisfy actually so we can think about that when we say int plus nothing so we are going to get something which would be int again so they satisfy all those laws and we are not going to discuss how we are going to satisfy now let's come to again the same definition we were talking about what are adps then to better understand or simply we can say adts algebraic data types is going to tell us the number of possible instances of the type so it tells number of possible instances of the type so what is meant by that so we will understand that it's very simple we will but we will come to know that what is meant by this definition uh all right so let's go with uh, what what are the adts in scala we have so in scala we have two types of adts the one is sum and the other is product and we will better understand with an example and after that we will come to the definition and we will understand that let's suppose we are talking about uh that's what we, we want to make some fruit salad there is some fruit salad we want to make and for that fruit salad we want to use two ingredients we want to use apple and for the sake of simplicity we are just going to use grapes so we are going to use apple and grape to make to make our fruit salad so in apple what we have in apple we have uh, two type of apple one is granny smith and the other is food fuji so we have two types of apple and uh, how about grapes so we have three types of grapes with us so we we have uh, cotton candy we have concord we have moon drops so it means we we are going to make a fruit salad which should be uh, whose ingredients should be apple and grapes and for our type apple we can use either granny smith or we can use fuji so you have to note the word that what we are using and if there will be another type like uh, comes so we will get we will add them so currently we have actually uh two types of apple 
and for grapes we have cotton candy we have concord we have moon drops and we we are actually containing three types of apple now by using these two type of apple and three types of grapes how many type of fruit salad we can make so we can use uh, six type of fruit salad we can make by using those combination because we have apple we have to make this fruit salad using apple and with grapes and we can see that these are the combination we can use to make our number of fruit salad so here if we talk about number of instances of salad so number of fruit salad we can make is uh, number of possible instances of apple cross number of possible instances of grapes and we know we can we have two types of apple and we have three types of grapes and we get six types of different fruit salad so the these apple types looks they are of some type and grapes also they are some type because we can use either cotton candy or we can use concord or we can use moon drops so they looks like disjunctive so we are using or type here and in scholar we we have either we have uh, option these are some types there will be other also but we talk about uh, now about what about fruit salads the fruit salad is uh, if we see we were getting the number of possible instances of fruit salad by making the product of their type so this is a product type it looks like a product type so when we were saying something number of possible instances number of possible instances of the particle type so if that number of possible instances we can get by summing them up so it is um, some type and if we get them by product so it is a product type now this is it's a very simple concept of algebraic data types now and uh, what about uh, advantages okay what's the advantages of using uh, ADTs so when we talk about advantages okay so we were saying the first very big advantage of using ADT they structure our domain model so we use them for structuring our domain model and the main model is a key part of our application so we, we just like here you see that we were just using the term that we were making a fruit salad which should have apple and grapes and we make a some type of apple that okay either it will be a granny smith or it will be a fuji and uh, similarly grapes and then we compose them together to make our domain model so that that domain model created by adts becomes a uh, a single platform where domain expert and developers can talk about and that make a complete sense for both of them that's a big benefit of using ADTs in structuring your domain model second they are only um, data container they are data container they shouldn't use uh, keep functionality with them they are data container only and the big benefit they are immutable and uh, they are uh, another one which is very important is composable so they are composable what is meant by composable it means now uh, just like in the previous example we make an ADT of some type so we get and we use it as an input and uh, to some particle function one and it generates another an output of some ADT and that ADT could be used again to as an input to some operation like uh, some operation and that operation can generate another ADT as an as a as an output 
So it gives a whole concept of piping. So we get a pipeline with that. So uh, pipeline, how wh what is meant by? So here you can see that when we uh, just like we say two plus three plus four and then multiply by two. So they, these are composition. We use this ADT, we generate the result and it generates something five plus four. And then again, we apply that operation, whatever it get, we, we can apply further that operation. So it will result 18. So this is how the comp composability work with ADT also. Uh, and that's for the sake of uh, simplicity. I can explain with an example. Let's suppose we 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 have a person. Uh, we have a case class. Case class person, and that person has different attributes as well as it has. Let's suppose phone which is strongly typed let's put phone and it has an email of type email there should be some validation for them so we use maybe some smart constructor to compose them so we if we use that concept here uh let me go so we have let's post two function which give us some ADTs in return so suppose uh, ADT will be considered like a like a block, like a legal block. That's why whatever we were talking about here, it is something like that. We we have a block and we plus it with another one and uh, we make another shape, let's suppose of this shape. And then we compose it. Yeah, let me clean it up. So we compose it with another block of that shape. And we compose something like this. And then we multiply might be with another one of something size this. And then we get something bigger so we are composing those blocks so something like that if we talk about ADT is a block like a legal block and we are going to compose it so let's suppose if we have two function which say extract font so it is going to extract some ADT and other one which extract this email might be using some smart constructor and uh, we were going to compose a person in that case so we can use let's suppose a for comprehension and uh, whatever the block we get uh, so we we get let's suppose this block we get that block and then we yield another one so in this way this is called composability and we compose them together to form a new object so i think that's it so we can uh, go to the code and we better understand how we can do that hi guys so now to review again at what we have so we were talking about making some fruit salad which should be composed of apple and grapes and number of possible uh, instances of type we have granny smith and fuji and number of possible instances of type uh, grapes we have is uh, cotton candy and concord and moon drops so uh, let's go away with this okay so how we will going to make that so we are saying that we want to make a fruit salad so we say case class we are going to make fruit salad and that should be composed of apple and we can use grapes so when we are going to use that what what is meant by apple and grapes so these are fruit so we can say sealed trait we are using we want to use fruit and how about uh, a fruit, uh, what type of fruit we have. So we, we are going to use seal trade. We are going to talk about apple, which extends fruit. And in fruit, we have uh, in 
in Apple, we have two types. We are going to talk that we have final case object. The one is Granny Smith, which extends Apple. So this is actually a sum type. So sum type is uh, Apple is a sum type. Sum type and uh, in in Scala we we can think of them like as an enum. We can use either. We can use option. And this is a uh, enum. So we can see that we have Granny Smith or we we can use final case object of type Fuji that extends Apple. So we get that. So this error is gone. Now we were going to talk about our second ingredient of fruit salad we have to use. It is about uh, sealed trade grapes. That extends, which is a fruit. So that extends, uh, come on, what is that? Extends fruit. And I can use the object fruit object grapes and uh, I'm going to use to define its type so case object it should be cotton candy cotton candy and that extends uh, grapes and uh, we talk about case object we were talking we, we can use concord as an ingredient in our fruit salad, which is also a grapes type. We can also use a case object of type moon drops that extends grapes also. So we can use that as an ingredient of our fruit salad. Uh, extends. Now, this is how we are going to define our uh, domain model. So we define each type and we can get number of possible instances of our fruit salad with, with the composition of these two. Hopefully that will make sense. And for the sake of simple example, for sure we can extend it further in some consequent coming videos. Thanks. Bye.